mechanical maintenance and repair on top, Jerry De La Cruz, your mechanic here. Today we have just a simple job, we just have a simple uh, oil service, okay, uh, replacing um, oil, uh, petrol filter, air filter, spark plugs um, on a microbus, uh, well 2.5, 2.6, I think this is a 2.6. Okay, so uh, the engines are really similar, except for bore and stroke, that will make it different. Okay, so I'll show you the car quickly. That's the, the vehicle there, that's the engine we'll be working on. Let me just take you inside the car. As you know, that these um, microbuses are, are very popular as, a, as a transport vehicles, you know, public transport vehicles to move people around. Uh, this particular vehicle belongs to a company called Seal Snorkeling. Um, you know, they basically, uh, they are outfit based, based out in Hard Bay. And, uh, you know, in the height of the tourism uh, 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 season, uh, they take people out uh, to Seal Island in uh, Hard Bay and uh, take them Seal Snorkeling. Um, with us being, um, you know, uh, in the COVID-19 situation, we're not getting uh, uh, an influx of tourists at the moment. So um, I think they just sent the vehicle in to get it serviced so that they are ready, um, you know, if the tourism industry sort of uh, 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 gets going again. All right, so a uh, basic vehicle, you know, inside you have sort of two uh, bucket seats. Okay, they've uh, converted this unit like so forth because there's always people with wet suits so they don't want, uh, you know, plus leather seats and so forth. They put these benches in, you know, and a sort of false uh, type of um, uh, grass type uh, carpet. Okay, so that when people sit here with their wet, uh, uh, wet suits on, um, because this vehicle gets used to transport uh, their clients uh, to and from the water. It's very really basic. It does have aircon, as you can see. It's got the full aircon over there. All right. So when you put the ignition on, you've got your normal warning lights. You know your temperature if the car overheats, uh, your oil light, uh, your battery light, and then of course you have your speedo on the left. You have your rev counter on the right hand side. You also have a temperature gauge um, and a fuel gauge. Okay. Um, the seating position is, uh, you know, sort of comfortable for the driver. It is a five-speed manual. Okay and um, basically nice all-around view they don't have too much uh, in the way of pillars uh, obstructing views and so on so it's a pretty nice vehicle for taking people around and for sightseeing as well okay but let's get back to this job with the bottom of this uh, vehicle there are two plastic plates um, you know which basically interlock with each other and uh, they come off with size 10 nuts uh, or bolts you know uh, if you're going to be doing a service like this i'm sure that you will find it down there it's very simple to take out um, so i'm going to go ahead and get those two plates off so that i can uh, uh, get started with the service okay so i've taken off the one half of the plate basically um, the one half that comes on the passenger side because that is where the oil filter is and the only reason I'm taking that plate off is to access the oil filter okay so I left the other half off because it wasn't necessary to take that off because the spark plugs are accessed from the top which is quite simple and then of course the, 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 um, the air filter which is a little bit of a fiddly job okay down here but uh, you know we're going to have to take that air filter out um, to be able to replace it, okay, but I'll show you how to do all that But that's what the plate looks like and that's what this what the bolts look like that held it down as you can see This here is a self tapper Okay, which means that the threads are all buggered there. So, you know, um, I think the last time I had it here I had to um, Sort of adapt it, you know, but um, that is what it's supposed to look like It's just a basically size 6 mil bolt with a 10 mil head Okay, so let's go and get some flush into this unit so that we can flush this motor. So the first thing to make sure of is that, uh, you know, you have actually um, warmed up this engine. Okay, because you don't want to put flush into a cold engine. So we'll just uh, take off the oil filler cap there. This time we are using shield once again because, uh, you know, my supplier has run out of Spaniard. Hopefully they'll get it in soon and then I'll be able to get back to using it but the shield is just as good but I prefer the Spaniard I'll be honest with you okay so uh, with a flush in basically have it set up for 15 minutes 
Okay, so let's get that timer going and get the course off. And with the engine running, okay, uh, we'll wait for that 15 minutes and when the 15 minutes expires, we'll get the oil drain. So with our 15 minutes up, we will switch the engine off. Uh, best to remove the oil filler cap. Put it on a safe place there. And let's go to the bottom to drain the oil. So with inside 90 spanner, we loosen up the oil drain unit with a sump plug. Okay, we put the we put a receptacle in place and we will loosen up the sump nut until the oil drains and while the oil is draining we'll turn our attention to the oil filter which is situated up here where my hand is let's get that camera positioned a little better and get some light on me and you can see the oil filter there okay uh, quite simply the oil filter gets loosened up with the chain okay it's very really easy to get to so i basically use my trusty chain here just to get the oil filter loosened up and when it is loosened enough with the chain we can turn it by hand but we need to get our oil catcher into position so that we don't mess okay i'm just trying to position the slide also for you all right open up and there you can see you know that excess oil draining out okay we'll turn it out all the way and we make 100 percent sure that our seal comes out with a filter always have a rag handy so that you can wipe up your spools okay we will also want to inspect that flange so we'll go ahead and move the camera to the oil flange put some light on it so we can see that the oil flange is looking good <coughs> there's nothing stuck to it okay just give it a good wipe make sure that it is okay you're gonna get a bit of oil dripping so we leave that to drip for a while I'll show you how to do the air filter and the spark plugs that's where we're working and that's the back of the vehicle we can take the pipe off from the valve side Okay, whichever works best. And then we loosen up that clamp. Okay. We'll get that unclamped like that. <laughs> so we have uh, another pipe over here which we need to loosen. Okay and uh, so that we can get the top lid of this air intake box to lift out so that we can replace the the air filter elements okay so we'll get that out of the way that's a breather pipe going to the engine okay this is a pipe going to our uh, idle valve all right and then there are three clips down here which basically just gets loosened up Okay, here's one there. Here is another clamp down at the bottom. Okay, to that holds the other end of this pipe on. Then we pull the big pipe off. Here is a, you've got to unclip that sensor. Okay, it's very simple. You just click, uh, press these two wings together. Okay, that's the clamp. Just try trying it. And I say without breaking without breaking this top flange. 
practical engine. Seems to be coming a little bit. Okay, I'm just using a pry bar and sticking it in and giving it a light twist. Okay, until we get, there we go. All right, so just to give you an idea, now we can bend this thing to pull it out. You see it's got that little unit on there. And now we can pull out the air filter element, which is not too bad, but I'm going to replace it anyway. Okay, so that basically fits into each other like that. Okay, so it's best to separate it. And this, this filter element has got an open end and a closed end. The closed end goes into the barrel, okay? It goes into the into the uh, air filter housing, so to speak. Just got to watch for these wires here. Okay, so that's a, a throttle positioning sensor there. So, okay, just like that. So what I would suggest when you put on a new uh, filter, put some rubber grease around the rubber so that it doesn't stick as much as this one did. Well, spark plugs are pretty easy to replace, okay? We'll just take the wires off one by one like that. You can't muddle them up, okay? We'll take the wires and we get it out of the way so that we can just use a normal uh, long extension. Try so doing one tube socket, okay? And that's how we will take the spark plugs out, quite simply. It goes counterclockwise. Right. We'll take the spark plugs out one by one. Okay, that's what the spark plug looked like. It's not burning too badly. Alright, I'll go ahead, get the rest of them out and get back to you. So to replace this uh, fuel filter, it's quite a challenge because you have very limited space to work with. Okay, so basically what you have to do, you have to loosen the in, in pipe and the, and the outlet pipe, okay, which is basically bolted onto two flanges, which has 19 size 19 screws, um, bar, special bolts at least that holds it in. And then on top over here is a bracket that holds the spoker in position. Okay, so I'm gonna try and uh, film it best that I can. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to follow. We discovered it's a star screw in the top there. Um, that you just have to loosen up and then the clamp will loosen up and start releasing this uh, holder that holds the the filter against the body okay so I'll just loosen that up as much as what I can fortunately it wasn't too tight on me okay and then that is it so we have the filter loose as you can see it's just basically a clamp um, maybe if I can get a bit get the light there you can see it uh, it's a star screw over there okay and then there are two holes if you look here there's two slots that these two little uh, grapples go into and then as you tighten it it'll just close up and it'll tighten this whole unit so we have on the one side we have a size 17 okay you actually want to put a, a receptacle down at the bottom so that when the fuel starts flowing okay that uh, you know uh, you have something to catch the fuel okay so with a receptacle in place we shall use a size 22 spanner to hold the filter itself and a size 19 on the one side to loosen up the I think this would be the the outlet pipe now okay with a 17 head so we'll just loosen it off and I can see the oil starting, the, the fuel starting to flow there. Okay, so we'll just turn that special screw out. 
all the way like that and then you can see it's got that special screw with the with the holes in it um, maybe you can't see it because there's not enough light on it let me put some light on it that's what it looks like okay all right so that's on the one side so you can see it's two different size threads and then on the intake side on the inlet side of the of the filter I just gotta flip it around like that and then we'll do the same on that side okay I've got a receptacle down at the bottom so any uh, um, any of the petrol has been caught there it's a size 24 okay and a size 19 down at the bottom there not an easy task here I said it but once you have that loose you can basically take the take that bottom one out okay so this fuel filter basically has a 14 mil hole for the inlet and a 12 mil hole for the outlet okay um, as you can see it's two different size bolts okay it's special bolts because you know the fuel hose has got a metal part that that uh, goes around there and allows the fuel in or out so on the one side you have a size 27 unit that's molded into the filter and on the other side is a size 22 okay now they could vary from make to make okay um, this filter make I don't know exactly what make it is and then of course we do have this unit that holds the, 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 the bracket that mounts the filter to the body okay so when we loosen that up that basically pulls apart okay it loosens it so that we can move this out of the way and there you can see the flow so that's the inlet and that's the outlet okay and uh, so that is the filter okay uh, basically and the bolts that holds your your inlet pipe and your outlet pipe with the fuel on, onto that so we will be using those over again you will notice that here is a washer on this side and there will be a washer on the other side and that basically clamps the the pipe and seals the pipe off as well so it's important to replace these little brass washers which does come with a filter okay so i'm going to get the filter and show you how to fit it to the best of my ability well i know how to fit it but to form it is such a crazy thing you know so i'll try my best for you okay so we've got our new petrol filter all right we'll just take off the blocking tabs there all right we'll get rid of the packaging all right so now remember that our that our outlet is basically on that side okay so that means we have to put our clamp on this way around all right like that and remember that the outlet is the smaller one and the inlet the bigger one okay um, I just and also remember that we have two smaller washers okay goes on to the uh, outlet and two bigger washers that goes on to the inlet All right so let's go and put this filter back So what I will do first is basically take the take the inlet pipe, okay? Take the inlet pipe's bolt. Okay, so I'll put a washer on and another washer on, on top of that. Okay, so that we have a washer both sides of the pipe. And then we'll take the the fault. And remember that this is basically the inlet side okay which is the thicker bolt 
I'll just turn it finger tight and then just simulate where the pipe should be okay we can go in there where the pipe should be where I should tighten it how I should tighten it and then I'll take it and take the two spanners which would be the size 19 okay and the size 27 so we'll say it's got to go in like that so that's the position we want it in so we'll take the size 27 on this side and a size 19 now we'll tighten it we'll really tighten it okay because you know you want to tighten it enough that it doesn't leak we'll check for leaks later so we'll tighten it up nicely like that that's pretty tight so now we can go and concentrate on the outlet side okay okay so now we want to simulate how that other pipe has to fit okay so we'll put it I'll put it in again and then see that that pipe basically has to has to run up at the right angle okay um, we'll bring that pipe out as far as we can if we can bring it out that far okay uh, that's as far as it's gonna go so we'll pull that pipe in about like that so we do the same with this one we put one washer on okay we'll put that pipe and we'll put the ball through the, the pipe hole we'll put the other washer onto the other end like that okay it's a bit fiddly but you'll get around to it and then we'll just thread it by hand first okay so that we know we don't cross thread once we got it threaded we turn it hand tight okay put it up against the bracket all right and yeah that looks like it's gonna work so now what we need to do we need to tighten that pipe okay so how we do that we shall use the 22 spanner to hold the and then the 17 spanner to tighten that remember that the out outlet pipe is 17 and not 19 so we'll hold the filter and we'll turn the pipe the, the bolt and we'll turn it as tight as we can okay remember now that those two brass washers will do its job in sealing okay turn it as tight as we can it's a bit tricky guys because you've got limited space to work in but you know as with most mechanical things not everything is simple and easy okay so we'll tighten it what i'm doing is i'm letting the spanner lock up against the tire so that i can get more leverage in here okay don't go too tight because you don't want to snap that bolt off okay so now what we'll do is we'll position We'll position that that clamp so that it catches into at least the top part of the groove. So we just have to push that bracket in to make sure that the bracket goes into both the holes. Okay, um, as you can see there, they both they both in position now. Okay, now I can just tighten up. The star screw over there so just simply put my hand through with the star screwdriver i'm feeling more than seeing here okay so it's going to be a feeling that you, that you have and i'll tighten it as tight as i can by hand and that should hold the filter 
um, into position so that uh, you know the filter don't bounce around when the car is driving okay because that could damage the filter itself or any one of the pipes okay that are running to it another thing that you want to make sure of is that the positioning of the pipes it's not going to allow the pipes to kink okay which will give you a restriction of flow of the fuel all right so as i said it's not one of the easiest um filters to do but uh you know one has to do it because you never know when this filter gets blocked up all right so back in there i've just got to tighten up properly I've, I've got her into in position nicely so i've just got to unfortunately i cannot film this any better than i am doing right here now okay but i'll take you in close once i've got everything tight so you can see what it should look like when uh, you successfully replace this filter okay that's nice and tight okay that filter is not going anywhere there we'll keep the light on it and i'll take my camera as close as possible maybe you can see that that is now that filter is secure okay it is secure so all that we have to do once we get this car started we just have to make sure that uh, there are no leaks on this pipe okay and to give you perspective that is where you come in okay the back wheel all right so I hope, <laughs> I hope that that has helped you, okay? That's how we replace um, the petrol filter. So just to recap quickly, the spanners that we used was a size 27, size 22, size 19, and a size 17 spanner, okay? The, the 27 and the 22 is basically for, that's the 27, okay? That is for the, for the inlet pipe. The 22 is for the outlet pipe, okay, the 19 was for the inlet pipe, and the 17 was for the outlet pipe, okay, so you got to hold this one while you tighten that one and, and, and the same way, alright, so those are the spanners that you need, you need four spanners to do the petrol filter on a micro bus 2.3, 2.5, 2.6, they're all similar. Okay, so to replace the air filter, we're going to use a little bit of rubber grease here, okay, which I will put inside here, just to lubricate the rubber on this air filter, you can see that's a brand new air filter, okay, so that when we do have the air filter in there and the flange goes on, okay, that will just slide on very nice and easily. Okay, so with that filter pushed in there, we'll take the flange, we'll put the flange on, get the flange to push down nicely, okay, push it down in the center, all the way down, get the clips to close up and catch, and lock it into position there, okay, three clips show you how that looks when we take it a little bit closer okay you can see that your clips are down properly nicely okay remember just keep this this one unit nice and free so that you can plug it in when the time comes we use it now it's this unit over here okay just keep that nice and free so now what we can do we can now just quite easily put our pipe on our piping on okay make sure that you put your that you put your clamp into position over there all right that goes down over don't let's not lose that clamp okay that just pushes down nicely that one pushes in we'll just keep the clips the clamps in the right position okay you don't want it to kink and you also don't want this clamp to interfere with the accelerator over there okay so we have that 
nicely down at the bottom there okay we have that clamping position we're going to tighten it now all right let's just loosen it up a little bit more just loosen up the clamp a little bit more so that when we do have it down there it's easy to turn and tighten okay so right you've got to use both hands here you've got to watch everything make sure that everything goes in properly nothing gets kinked nothing gets hooked okay put that pipe on nicely clamp in position down there okay so all that i now need to do is to tighten these two clamps all right that'll keep the big hose in position so that the air flows nicely through the filter the air gets filtered the no uh, impurities gets into the vehicle okay to cause any other problems there tighten that clamp tighten the bottom clamp Need I say both ends needed we'll tighten the bottom clamp as well it's quite simple if you know what to do <laughs> right, so to do the best that you can um, I'm doing the best that I can to form this whole incident for you this whole procedure for you okay so now it's time to put back our little sensor okay just basically pushes in and you should hear it click okay and it just clicks into position nicely all right you might have to push against those ears just to get it to to click in and then of course we'll put one pipe on okay and we'll put our other pipe on and we'll put our clamps on properly into position okay I use a uh, special pliers for this particular clamp if you don't have you can use a water pump pliers okay I'll get that clamp to come up where it should be over there we'll get that clamp into position clamp it nicely okay and that is how you fit an air filter okay onto this make sure that your little sensor down at the bottom there okay make sure that that sensor is plugged in okay your clamps are on all your pipes are on okay your things are tight you there's no restriction to your accelerator there okay you've got nothing caught in between over here no wires caught all right so now we can go ahead put the air the oil filter on and uh, fill up with oil also we just need to put the spark plugs in but it's very simple okay you can see it's very simple to do the spark plugs so we'll make sure you have the proper spark plugs bpr 7 esz n okay to ngk so basically you can just turn it give it thread by hand like that okay and uh, or like I normally do I for, for better reach I use my trusty little rubber pipe there but also the important thing to do is to check the gaps okay make sure that the gap is not closed all right make sure it's open you use your normal size 21 tube socket okay because these are the large the large plugs okay put them again just tighten it up with a ratchet okay and put your plug wire back make sure that it goes on nicely okay so cool if you give a light tug on it it won't just come out i'll go ahead and do the other five and get back to you when i'm done another thing i like to do i like to just check these where these plug wires plug into the distributor cap make sure that there's no corrosion 
you know, any white fluffy stuff there. You know, I'll check all of them, take them out one by one. Okay, so you don't mess up the firing order. I'll check them all out, especially the center one as well. You want to make sure that there's no corrosion on the cap. Another thing that I would do, I would normally just unclip the distributor cap, okay, and do a visual inspection on the, I like to do a visual inspection on the distributor cap on the inside. I'm just trying to locate it, because I can't see it, so I've got to feel it. Okay, so it just clips off like that. We'll take that cap off, we'll take a look inside, make sure that there's no corrosion. Uh, this cap still looks fine because if I remember correctly, I replaced this cap um, at some time. Yeah, because we had a problem with it. And we'll just check the rotor as well, make sure that there's no undue corrosion and wear. Alright, lock the cap in, in the right position. Just put the clips back. It holds the cap in position there. Okay, that's just something I like to do. And with that, we can now go and do the filter and the sampler. So with a nice new washer and a little bit of threading tape there. Okay, I have now, I'm going to thread that sump plug by hand make sure that we do not cross thread it okay be 100% sure please that you do not cross thread it okay because we don't want to cause complications at this late stage of the service you know so we just make sure that everything goes in nice and smoothly don't force anything okay I might seem a bit awkward here because I'm trying to avoid hitting my camera. Okay, so just bear with me. I just want to tighten that sump plug. Okay, and turn it against. Against and just give it a, a bit of a nip. Okay, that's our sump plug replaced. And then we'll go to the oil filter. The oil filter make sure you put a form of oil on the new seal we'll also just turn the filter on you don't want it to feel tight you want it to go on easy okay as I say you want it to go on easy turn it nice and tight by hand you can use two hands if you need to because if you've got a, a um, AC compressor there gets in the way. <laughs> Take a rag, wipe our grease marks because we gotta come back here and check for leaks. Okay, once we start up. All right, so we've got our oil filter in position, nice and tight. We've got our um, some plug back. All right, so let's go pull it up with oil, start up, and check for leaks. Okay, so what we are using for this micro bus, we're using the HX5 25W60, which is basically the high mileage oil, because this car does have high mileage. Okay, so we'll break that security seal. Okay, and you know when that security seal is not on, uh, the, 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 the packaging, you should question it because it means that they can throw any oil in this bottle over here and claim that it is what it is on the label you know when you have that security seal there is that little bit of that little bit of guarantee that it is what the label says it is because nobody's tampered with the label all right so we're starting out with four liters and we'll see where that takes the level to okay so point cautiously do not spill or mess Okay, so with four liters in the sump, we'll check the dipstick, see if it is safe to start the car with that amount of oil in there. So to access the dipstick, you have this little door here, which you open up. What I normally do, 
I just put a cap in there just to keep it open. Pull the dipstick out, it's quite a long dipstick there. Alright, as you can see, it's quite a long dipstick. We'll take the dipstick out, give it an initial wipe. Okay, we'll put the dipstick back in again. Like that. Okay, then we'll pull it out again and we'll see what the reading says. As you can see, it actually needs a little bit more, so I'll put in another half liter. So I'll put in another half liter. The level. This time, we're on the full mark. Okay, just slightly over. But now remember, we still need to fill up. We still need to fill up our oil filter. So we'll take the cap the oil filler cap, put it on securely, make sure it clicks on nicely, okay, make sure it clicks on nicely, and then we'll go ahead and start this vehicle now. The first thing that I would actually check is just to make sure that the petal filter is not leaking, so let's get some light, so here we are, by the petal filter, okay, shine a light on that petal filter, it's definitely dry, bone dry, so there's no leaks on the petal filter, which means that the seals are sealing off nicely. So down at the oil filter, nice and dry. Sump plug. Okay, with the engine switched off once again, we're going to check the oil level now. Remember that the oil filter has now been filled. Okay, we'll run it for a few minutes. We'll check that oil level. And the dipstick oil is beautifully clean that's definitely full still so four and a half liters is what this micro bus took it's a 2.3 by the way this one okay we we'll just put that cap back over there not that we used it put it back get that door closed properly make sure that your your filler cap is closed properly okay and um, that's basically the oil change and the filters changed you know i hope that that has been informative i hope that you have learned something new um, i hope that you can actually uh, execute the service if you need to on your own but don't worry okay at the end of all my videos there is a phone number you can watch at me um, you can call me you know if you need any help or assistance but i do remind that it's only in an advisory capacity because I cannot, in essence, fix your motor car if I'm not present, if I'm not there. But I can guide you, okay? There is a difference. So please do not become frustrated, you know, um, if you feel that, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I sort of can't do more uh, um, over the phone. But you are most welcome to get in touch and speak to me. Okay, just a quick tip here. Yeah. Um, you know, you get these uh, these struts that hold these doors up. You know, like you can see this one is, you know, pretty bad here. Yeah. Um, on any car that has a bonnet that uses these struts, just a quick tip here, yeah, what I use, I use a, I use a vice grip. You know, I just open it up. I basically open it up to as far as I want. I go with the vice grip, just lock the vice grip up there, and that basically secures your your wood, you know, or whichever uh, a door you need to keep open. So once again, thank you very much for joining me in my workshop here at VehicleMaintenanceAndRepairs.com. We just completed the 2.3 microbus basic service. Okay, I showed you how to do the air filter, how to do the petrol filter. I hope that the footage is. Uh, good enough for you to follow okay how we did the spark plug changes and so on and the little minor checks that we did on the car all right uh, the car is good for another 15,000 kilometers as far as servicing goes okay um, i would like to say thank you very much to my subscribers thank you for taking the numbers up thank you for those that are interacting with me those that are calling and asking advice i will help where i can okay um, don't forget 
to, uh, to subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. Uh, press the notification button, bell button over there to get the latest videos, um, which is basically I'm doing it once a week now. Um, I hope to increase it to two a week in the near future. Okay, but let's just stick with one a week. I'm not going to make promises I cannot keep right now. Um, but uh, again, we are still under uh, COVID-19 lockdown. I think we stage three here in South Africa. It is today, the 10th of August, 2020. Okay, so take care out there. Okay, thanks for joining me in my workshop. Gary Delacruz from VehicleMaintenanceAndRepairs.com. See you next time. Safe driving. Cheers.